Hey folks, welcome back to the channel and welcome to part two of our little look at the uh, Siglent SCS 804X HD. Now I got a comment in the last video uh, about a couple of things. First of all, the person said that the, the, the feet were, were, I guess uh, I've forgotten the exact wording, but he said, he said it was kind of like a joke and that, that they would easily go back down if you were to move the scope around. And they're exactly the same feet as I have on the SDS 1104XE, which I've had it for you know, a couple of years or more. And I've never found that to be a problem. You know, usually when I, if, if I've got the scope sitting up like this, and I'm going to move it, I will usually just, you know, I'll pick it up, put the feet down, because I don't know what it's going to be like when I get to where I'm going. So, um, but you know, as far as moving it around, I mean, if, if it's moving it around here, you know, yeah, you know, the, the feet do fold in fairly easily, but, but generally speaking, like you're, the, the scope is going to go down, the feet will hit first, they're always slightly forward, and unless you do something like this, they're not going to close up on you. But even if they do, uh, you just flip the scope forward a little bit like that, and with your two hands, you flip it forward. So I don't, I don't exactly see that being a major problem. Uh, I didn't cover the handle either. The handle is really nice. It snaps into place very positively. I mean, if they made this feet snap in as positively as the handle, uh, I don't think that person would have had any complaint about it. But yeah, the handle is very nice. And we also had a comment to make about the probes. Let's have a, a look at the probes here. Now these are, you know, they're only 70 megahertz probes. They're the, the, the least expensive probes that uh, Siglent sell. I think he mentioned that the Rigel ones were much better. I don't know what the Rigel ones were like. I have all sorts of probes around here and these don't feel terrible compared to all the other probes that I have. I mean, these just, they feel like probes. Let me get a couple more different probes that I have. So second one, they're selling these particular probes for $20 a piece. That's pretty reasonable. And I don't expect that you should expect a heck of a lot for them, but like they say, they feel great. So here, here's some probes that we can compare them to. These ones here, these are Pico, these made by Picotech. Uh, they're 200 megahertz probes. These ones are a slightly different design. They get, the probe is a little bit bigger, feels a little bit heavier in the hand. That's because they have the compensation built up inside them, so they'll have to be a little bit thicker. Um, do they feel any worse than these ones? No, in fact, uh, these ones seem to, you know, they seem to operate smoother. Like if you look, going by the clip here, how about the switch? That switch is very positive. So is that one. This one moves less than this one does. Uh, as far as the cable goes, this is fairly supple for a, a scope cable. This cable is a little bit more supple. It's a little bit thinner. So yeah, half a dozen of one and six of the other in that respect. These are a, a, a Hantec 300 megahertz probe. These ones are a little bit more money. I think they're around about 60 or $70 each. Um, yeah, they're almost identical to these in, in dimensions. You know, the, the cable, the cable is a little bit nicer on these and they are 300 megahertz bandwidth. Like I said, they're three times the price. These are 500 megahertz probes. These ones run around about, I think the last time I saw the price on was around about $150, $160. These, the cabling does not feel any nicer than the Hantec probe. The probe itself is, is completely different. It is a, you know, it's a times 10 probe only, so they don't need to have room for a switch. It's a little bit more smaller and compact. It is very, very smooth to work with. And, uh, you know, I've tested these probes before. These are very nice probes, but, you know, they are seven or eight times the price of this probe. And I could go even more. Like I've got some Tektronix uh, probes over there that, that cost $1,000. You know, the sky's the limit, but these probes are fine. So, okay, so here's a real uh, inexpensive probe. This is uh, the probe that came with the Zewi. So, this one feels, the switch is a little bit more vague than this switch. But other than that, they're about the same dimensions. This one's a little bit, maybe a little bit smaller. Let's put the clip on it here, see. 
No, but the same. Same size, same construction. The uh, cable feels about the same. The connector is about the same at the end. This one's got a metal. This one's got a, well, it's metal inside with a plastic shroud on it. Let's check one of these probes out, okay? Let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a scope up. I'm going to fill the screen with the scope and we'll check out the bandwidth of the probe to see if it's, if it's any good. I'm going to use a 600 megahertz scope to check out the bandwidth just so that, you know, the, the 70 megahertz bandwidth of this scope, actually this one's been, this one's been uh, improved to 200 megahertz. And uh, if we have time today, I'll, I'll show you what that means with respect to the rise time and the bandwidth of this scope here. It's quite, a, it's quite amazing actually. Okay, folks, we should have the oscilloscope up there. And you can see on it now we're, we're putting in 10 megahertz from this little tiny SA here. And we're getting 178 millivolts. So let's uh, start off with that. So uh, 178 and the 3 dB point would be 0.707 of that. So times 0.707. And that will give us uh, 126. So 126 millivolts will be our 3 dB down point. So let's go ahead. Um, let's bring it up. Uh, let's bring it right up to the 70 megahertz because you know we expect it to work there. So let's see what it looks like at 70 megahertz. Let's get a new average on the statistics there. Oh, okay. So we've dropped a little bit. Now we're down to 167. So wow. Yeah, it's it's not 3 dB down 70 megahertz. Let's, uh, let's bump it up to 100 megahertz, see where we go from there. We're, we're still around about 168. Let's try, let's get brave, let's try 140 megahertz. Okay, we're down a tiny bit to 153 millivolts, thereabouts, 154. That's twice the rated bandwidth. Okay, let's, uh, let's bring it up to yeah, let's go up to 170. Yeah, we're beginning to come down a bit now. We're down at 140. We've still got a long way to go to 126. Let's get brave, 200. Okay, we're getting closer now. So we're at uh, 133. Should we try Should we try 210? That'll be three times the bandwidth. We're still above the 126. And we're at three times the bandwidth. Uh, so we try 215. How lucky did we feel today? So 215 megahertz from a 70 megahertz probe. I say, despite how it compares to the Rigol probe, it's a pretty good probe. It's got a 215 megahertz bandwidth. So now feel comfortable using it on your scope um, at 70 megahertz. It's, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine at 100 megahertz. And it's going to be acceptable even if you do improve your scope up to 200 megahertz. Enough of that. I think we've, we've got a good idea of what the probe is like. So I'm going to put a, a Botnar fast rise time oscillator onto my new scope because I have improved it. And we'll see what kind of uh, rise time and bandwidth we're getting out of it. I'll set up for that and be right back. All right, so we've got the Bodnar fast rise time oscillator. We've got a 50 ohm load here. I'm just going to plug this into channel one. And we have a rise time there as so 1.37 nanoseconds. So that would be 255 megahertz. So that's, that's a nice improvement, a very nice improvement. Now what I want to do, um, I know if, if you look at that waveform there, you can see that uh, on the top and the bottom of the leading edge of the waveform, you can see that little spike. And we're going to use this oscilloscope to show us what 12 bits can do for looking at that little spike. So uh, let me set up for that. I'm going to compare it with my 600 megahertz scope, the Seglint SDS 2504. That's an 8-bit scope and this is a 12-bit scope, so we can kind of see what advantage we're getting from the 12 bits. So let's have a look at that. Okay, let's take a single shot of that. And uh, now let's zoom in on it. So we'll zoom in this way a bit. And what we really want to do is we want to zoom in this way. All right, so 
And this is what we're able to see. We could probably see even a little bit more, but this gives us the entire peak of that waveform and a little bit of the ripple afterwards. Now we can see that. Let's take a look at how that looks on the 8-bit scope. All right, folks, voiceover time. So I think that's a pretty convincing demonstration of the advantage of having 12 bits. It's so much clearer. You get to see so much more in the signal when you need to see it. And uh, it's, uh, it's the reason everybody is, uh, you know, dancing around about these new inexpensive 12 bit scopes. It's a game changer. Okay, folks, I hope you got something out of the video today. Uh, we had a look at the, the probes. We had a look at the feet. Um, they don't make any difference to me. But anyway, we, we did look have a, a very brief look at the bandwidth improvement by going up to 200 megahertz. It actually gives you 250 plus megahertz. And we had a look at the difference between an 8-bit and a 12-bit scope. So in the next uh, video on this, I'm just going to go through the menus and uh, the features that this scope has. Okay, folks. Thank you very much for joining me today, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.